Hi, welcome back to Country Basket Weaving. I'm your hostess, Sandy Atkinson. Today we're going to be working on a diagonal twill weave basket, and it's this one here. I've added a little bit of color in there, but that has another purpose other than adding color to it. The material and cut for this pattern is as follows. You're going to need 5 8 inch flat, cut 28 pieces, 36 inches long. Dye four of the pieces your color choice. 5 8 inch flat oval we'll use for the rim, 5.5 millimeter cane, number two round smoked if you prefer, and raffia we're going to put in for the rim filler. I've already went ahead and laid out the base because it's a challenge to weave this one in and it'll be much easier for me to talk you through it. So I want you to take all your pieces and after they're soaked mark the centers on the wrong side. Lay six pieces under the tips underneath the spoke weight, then lay two of your dyed pieces and then six more of your natural pieces. So we have 14 pieces laying under the spoke weight and the centers are lined up together down here. Starting with your first row, it's going to be the row, this dyed row right below the center lines. That's your first row and it's going to weave in under two, over two, under two, over one, under one, over two, under two, over two. Row two will be a natural piece. It weaves over one, under two, over two, under two, over two, under two, over two, under one. Row three, over two, under two, over two, under one, over one, under two, over two, under two. Row four, under one, over two, under two, over two, under two, over two, under two, over one. Row five, under two, over two, under two, over one, under one, over two, under two, over two. Row six, over one, under two, over two, under two, over two, under two, over two, under one. Row seven, over two, under two, over two, under one, over one, under two, over two, and under two. Now, row nine comes back up here, or row eight, pardon me, row eight is another dyed piece, and now we're going to weave on, uh, from the center line up. And your, your eighth row is this way, over two, under two, over two, under one, over one, under two, over two, and under two. Row nine, under one, over two, under two, over two, under two, over two, under two, and over one. Row ten, under two, over two, under two, over one, under one, over two, under two, over two. Row eleven, under one, over two, under two, over two, under two, over two, un under two, over two, and under one. Row eight, uh, pardon me, row twelve, over two, under two, over two, under one, over one, under two, over two, under two. Row twelve, uh, row thirteen, under two, under one, over two, under two, over two, under two, over two, under two, over one. And our last row, row 14, under two, over two, under two, over one, under one, over two, under two, and over two. That was a mouthful. Okay, now clip your four corners. Once, well, first of all, once you have this all woven, in, you need to space it. And it's spaced just a tiny bit apart. I need some room to get in there to do my twining. Your base measurement is 10 and measured in two spots by 10. And again, measure it in two spots. So you have a squared base 10 by 10. Then I've taken my smoked reed, and I like the smoked against the uh, natural and, and the green that I have in there. And I've taken a long piece, again, two different end lengths. We're going to put a crimp in it, break down those fibers so it won't break when I put a sharp bend on it. And I'm going to clamp my four corners. That's kind of important because I have everything spaced and I don't want to lose my shape on it. 
I'm going to pull it closer towards me. And we're going to twine this. I like to start away from the corner. I don't want to start on my two dyed pieces because those pieces I'm going to be weaving with first. So I'm going to come under here. This is an underweave and it's still away from my corner. And I'm going to twine. Again, taking the left piece, it goes underneath the next spoke. And because this is a tight weave, I'm going to need a tool and I'm going to have to pull this twining down in there tight. And it does take a tool to do that. And it's going to take some time to do this twining. You have regular and irregular corners, so be sure and watch for those. I know we've talked about those before. This is an irregular corner, so I have to take my left one around first, and I'm going to put a crimp on there because I want a nice sharp bend, and then bring the one that's coming from under over. So go ahead and twine all the way around the basket. I'm going to get in the next one where I finished my twining and I'll quickly show you how to end it. And this one is real wet. Here I have my twining done. I've watched my corners. This is where I started. And so on this piece, I'm going to end where I started. I can cut off this excess length I have here. And I'm going to come across here, this is the one on my left, and I'm going to put a crimp on it and I'm going to hide it underneath. I'm going under the twining and I'm opening up underneath the weaver and I'm going to cut that a little shorter because I don't want it to come out and I don't want the end to show. And I'm going to stick it under there like that. Bring the other end up and again, let's put our crimp on it first. Cut the length so it hides underneath there and slide that one in there also. And there it goes. Okay. Now, one reason that I did this in the colors is to show you, this is a basket that's somewhat of a challenge for you. And I wanted to show you because the sides, um, they form differently. Our, our ends here are our weavers. And we're going to bring the, first of all, we need to turn this over. So my right side is now up. And I'm going to bring these together. And these are going to become my two corner spokes. And it's much easier if you weave with some dyed pieces in here to help you with the pattern to understand it. When you get good at this pattern, you can make all kinds of dyed pieces or leave them out and do it all natural. You can eventually leave out the twining also because you'll understand the pattern. I'm coming under here and this is a twill. This is a true twill up the sides. I'm over two here so I know I must be under the next two. Taking the spoke to the left, I'm going to bend it so it goes to the right and I have this little peak here on it and that's going to become my corner. I'm weaving it under two, over two, under two, and then I'll have one over here. And clamp that with a clothespin to hold it in place. Come over here, I'm under two from the base on this piece so I know I have to be over two going my right piece to the left. So I'm going to be over my other dyed and over the next piece which is a natural and weave that piece out. Now, it's a lot easier if I turn this whole base up and I'm working this way with it. I'm coming to this side. I was under two, I'm, pardon me, I was over two, now I'm under two here, so I know I have to be over to the next two, which is one, two, then under two, and then I'm over two. And I'm going to move my close pin up to hold that next one in. Okay, coming back to this side. I am over two, so I know I have to be under two. Here's one under. I'll be under the next spoke, and then over the next two, and under the last two. Okay, weave this other side. Over two, under two, over two, and under the one, because there's only one left on that side. Again, to the other side, I'm under two, over two, under two, over one. I'm going to do this a little quicker. This piece is over two, under two, so I have to bring it up here to be over two, 
and under two. And I'm going to move my close pin up. Over here, I am under one. I need to be under two and over two. Okay, let me bring these pieces up. I'm over two. I need to be under the next. I'm working back from the right side. Then I'll work on the left side. Now we're going to go back and work with our white right weavers going to the left. And I'm going to be under the next two, and or over the next two, and then under. I have a couple pieces left to weave out. I'm under two here, so I know I have to be over the next two. And this piece, I'm over under two. I need to move this one under. So I'm now over these two and under the last one. That's one portion of one side. Take the basket and flip it over. A quarter of a turn, and we're going to do the same thing in here. Again, I'm coming in here. I'm over two, so I know from my left piece going to the right, I have to be under two, over two, under two, and then over one. Now as I start this piece, I'm under two, I know I'm going to be over the next two, which is my dyed and my natural, and I'm under two, over two. Now I'm going to pick up the weaving that began on this side. My spokes are right in place for me, and it just naturally falls right into place, still following that twill pattern of over two, under two. I'm under two, I have to be over these two, then under the next, move my clothespin and hold that side up. This will eventually slide down and this will stay into better place once I get more woven in. Okay, come back to this side. Over two, under two, and then over two. Come back here, this is my next piece to be woven, woven in. I'm over two, I need to be under two, over two, under two. Work it right into the side. Over, under, over, under. Okay, I'm back here. Under two, over two. I have to pull up these spokes. And I'm over two, under two. And then one on the end. I can work this so I'd like you to be able to see this side. And again, this piece is going to work right into the side piece up here. I hope you can see how this is becoming a side now, and now this is becoming a side. And it was done from the two dyed spokes. That's why we put those dyed ones in, to help you understand the pattern more. Plus, they really are pretty in the pattern, too. And I need to work this piece in. That's my next piece to work. Over two, under two. I'm going to have to look and see what I'm doing. Again, we need to pull all these down a little bit tighter. And they kind of work in as you keep working the pattern. Over two, under two. Move the close pins. I'm working on this piece now. I need to be over two, under two. It's not a hard pattern, but the first time you do it, it is a challenge. But I think once you understand it, you can really make some beautiful baskets using this pattern. Okay, the next one I need to work is this one right here. I need to, I'm working on this spoke here. I need to be under two, over two, under two, over two. I'm almost there, almost the way there. Over two, under two, over two. It's easier if I just slide this piece right in here. Now I'm working this piece here, my final piece on this side. Over two, under two. And I need to be under this piece here. See the twill that this creates up the side? Now I have half my basket woven. I still have another corner over here. This is my third corner. Again, I'm going to kind of bend this in, taking my left piece and going to the right. I'm going to be under two, over two, 
and then over the one. I'll need another clothespin. And come to this side. And again, as I work in my left side, I'm having a little bit of trouble with my corner. You want to put a nice little corner bend on there. There we go. And as I work this piece in, I'm going to start catching the ends from my left side that I just finished. And I'm going to weave that in. Over two, under two, and weave it out as far as you can. Come back to this side. I'm going to do just a couple more, and then we need to go on. I need to be working with this piece here. I am uh, under two, so I need to be over these two. Sometimes you just need to stop and look at the pattern and make sure everything is still on the twill. And you can work that side up. Continue working in this manner. You're going to turn and you're going to have this one last side to work and then it's going to take on the shape of the basket. I've already done that part and I've got all my twilling in. And here we see how we have it all shaped. And at the end, when you get them all in, you'll need to set it up and just weave in these extra little ends up here because sometimes they come undone or you may have missed one. Go back and check them all. Then you're going to take a pencil line. And it's easy if you start with a pencil line. Once you do it, you'll understand. And we want this end to be all even across here. So I just did a pencil line and made sure I got the same number of spokes up and I was on the same line all the way across. And once you have that pencil line in there, then you're going to come in here and we're going to cut right at the top of the pencil line. You're going to cut this all off and make all this top even. You might want to make sure all your spacing is real good and even all the way around the basket before you start cutting all this off. Because once it's off, we can't put it back on, of course. I'm going to cut it all the way around. I've already checked my spacing. Oops, I'm a little bit higher here. need to come down a little bit. need some good sharp scissors for this part. Almost there. Once I have all of it cut off, I am still going to look at it and make sure that it's pretty even across here. Sometimes when you're cutting across there, you uh, will get a little uneven. Just go back, do any trim and adjustment on it that needs to be done. Then we're ready to put our rim on. For the rim, I kept it real simple for this one. You could do a decorative rim on it real easily, but we're just going to do a basic rim today. I've got a 5 8 inch flat oval. And I'm going to come in here, and like I always do, I'm going to whittle down the top for about three inches. And I'm going to lay it across here and, of course, pin it on. Flat side goes against the basket. Make sure I get all those ends in uh, laying flat underneath the rim and work it around. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to whittle this or cut this off. Come in here and whittle the back down so that it will lay next to itself flatter. And it won't be a big bulky area there. I need to cut this back just a little more and pin that on. Now, just a second because I dropped my piece here. And I'm going to come in and we're going to whittle this down the very same way that we did before and put it on an opposite side, work it around, butt it up in there real tight so we don't have any gaps in it. And cut this off over here. And one last whittle here. Whoops, that was a little too much. We'll go ahead and use it. I've used five millimeter cane on here because I like it's a big basket and it can handle the size. I'm going to come in here from the bottom up. Again, my 
right side is facing the inside of the basket. I'm coming between the rim and the basket. I know we go over this a lot, but sometimes it, it's hard to understand what I'm doing, so it never hurts to review. Go back to the outside. Now, this is where, right between these spokes in here, and I want to come down right here, so I have enough underneath my rim, and you should be able to go all the way through and go to the inside. And we're going to repeat that step one more time. And back to the outside. I need a tool in there. There we go. Bring up the inside. That'll bring my, outs my right side of my caning. will now be on the outside right where we want it. I'm going to put a point on here. And I'm going to have to come in here. I'm going to go back into that same hole because that's the closest one to me. And I'm going to create another hole over here. And they're going to be always the, right between where the two spokes cross. I'm going to go in. I'm going to go ahead and get this started. And when I have a couple of these started, I'm going to insert my raffia. I've chosen a green raffia on this one. You could use seagrass. You could use um, a larger round reed for here. You could use um, a lot of different things for your filler. I like to fill it in, especially this top, because there are a lot of ends up here showing. I've chosen a green raffia to match the uh, green on the side. I'm going to take a few pieces, pull them apart, and I'm going to have all different end lengths here so that when I come to end this, it'll fit nicely. Uh, I can work the ends in. And I'm going to come back here and I'm going to tighten it. It's a whole lot easier if I start some of my lashing and then go back and pull everything tight once my raffia is set in there. Go ahead and work this pattern all the way around. And I'm going to show you quickly how to end it. I'm going to go to the next basket. Let me set this one out of the way. And this one I have worked all the way around. This one I did in a pretty pink. I'm back to where I started. I don't need all this end. I only need about eight inches to end it, so I'm going to cut that off. Bring this around here. I can get rid of this tail now. That's when, from when I started it. Give it a tug and pull it. Go back into the original hole, the very first one you made when you started it. You may have to open it up a little more. Insert it in there. Pull it tight. Now you have to come in here between the inside rim and basket, open it up, and bring your reed up there. Give it a pull. Very gently lift up this raffia, this rim filler, whatever you use, and go underneath it. And then work your way down. Come in this way, open it up, and bring that in down. I would go ahead and do that twice to really secure it in there. Work your raffia back in place and clip your end off here. There, now you've completed a beautiful diagonal weave basket. You can go in and, and uh, cut off some of these hairs because there's a bunch of hairs sticking up and uh, give it some shape if you need to work on the shape. Last week we talked about torching the basket. This would be a good one to practice on. Just be real careful with that uh, burner. Next week, we're going to be working, I'm going to bring in my shave horse and my shave pony and show you what that's all about. We're going to be working with ash and uh, we're going to be making this basket. It's made out of mold, a basswood mold. This is a small one, um, a miniature basket. I also did this one on a mold here and this is ash also. This was done on a round mold. We'll be working on the rectangular mold so you can get the idea and the feel for it. And I think you'll really enjoy it. I hope we have time next week also to show you how to make a handle on our shave horse. That's one of my goals, to get all that accomplished next week. So we'll look for you then. Take care this week and have a wonderful week. We'll see you next week.